must eat. Everybody must eat. Everybody must eat. Everybody must eat. Everybody must eat. Yes. Everybody must eat. Everybody must eat. Everybody must eat. Look, the girl laughing back there. She think it's a joke. Look, she laughing. Y'all, throw that chicken up here on my mom. A few moments later. They want me back. The next day. I just want to say thanks to everybody that you know carry for me. Ain't nothing, never been nothing. I never been do nothing like that ever in my life. I don't even know what ha what what happened. Like I need some sleep. I'm scared. I'm traumatized. Never again in my life. Like seriously, I'm tired. I love y'all. Ain't nothing. Hey, Pitta. They put the cheese sandwiches up in the the vent just so the air could stop coming in the cell. Like, <laughs> all right, guys. So we have to do another follow up story about the Philadelphia BLM riots, specifically involving one influencer by the name of Meatball. Okay, who is a agent of chaos? Uh, she's a ghetto influencer on TikTok. And she ended up making the very silly mistake of live streaming herself doing the Philadelphia BLM riots while she and others were looting. Okay, multiple stores, including a Apple store, clothing stores, liquor stores, a Popeye's. Okay, they were literally looting a Popeye's for fried chicken. And uh, this woman ended up getting arrested by police. Okay, after the incident. Now, lo and behold, less than 24 hours later, nobody should be surprised that in a liberal city, when criminals get arrested, even after they, they live stream themselves committing the crimes, um, they're released less than 24 hours later on bail. And that's exactly what happened with this woman, Meatball, who was charged with multiple felonies, including... Uh, burglary, conspiracy, criminal trespass, riot, criminal mischief, criminal use of communication facility, and receipt of stolen property. Yeah, being charged with all these things uh, apparently uh, means that you can get out on a $25,000 bond. Take a look. Breaking overnight, pockets of looting continued at Philadelphia businesses, including a fine wine and good spirits shop in the Crescentville section. Police arrested two people near Adams Avenue and East Tabor Road after spotting them loading up a car with liquor. The state store was not boarded up. Police say the two thieves were just helping themselves to what was left. Now, all Philadelphia liquor stores, plus one in the suburbs, are under mandatory closure this morning because of the widespread looting that continues. Action News reporter Catherine Scott has been following the story since yesterday morning and joins us live in Center City with the latest developments. Catherine. Matt, and it's unclear when these stores will reopen. They're still assessing the damage. Thankfully, no one was injured. But yesterday, all the state liquor stores in Philadelphia and one in Wincote were closed after 18 fine wine and good spirit stores in Philadelphia were looted Tuesday night. The mayor said social media played a huge role in looting across the city. It accelerates everything. It makes it more difficult for our officers uh, and our intelligence people to track it. Uh, and uh, we had the one, one young lady was live streaming the whole thing. I wound up with 12,000 followers and created, basically incited the riot. Oh, oh, it's happening, it's happening. Police are now using this video for evidence. 21-year-old Deja Blackwell, known as Meatball on social media, live streaming Tuesday night, broadcasting what stores and what locations to loot. Chaos started in Center City at the Apple Store, Lululemon and Foot Locker. The looting continued, a caravan of vehicles driving to different locations, and police say Blackwell encouraging people to join in. Businesses were also hit in West Philadelphia and Northeast Philadelphia. Mom and pop stores, pharmacies, state liquor stores. Now at least 52 people have been arrested. 
three of them juveniles, but mostly adults ranging in age. You see Blackwell crying in her mugshot. As Blackwell was arraigned, the DA asked for the maximum, just under $1 million bail, but the bail commissioner said $10,000. After the district attorney's office appealed, bail was set at $25,000, which she posted overnight. Police say the crimes were not connected to the peaceful protest of the earlier court decision. Neighbors say this behavior hurts everyone. It's just an excuse for them to, to act up. Like it don't make no sense. They tearing up our, you know, the neighborhoods where we got to shop at and they got to shop at. So, you know, they make it bad for everybody else. Philadelphia police say at the center of Tuesday night's looting is a woman identified as Deja Blackwell, known on social media as Meatball. Investigators allege her actions rise to the level of conspiracy. She is live streaming as she is committing burglaries, as she is in, in encouraging others to commit burglaries. We are working with the uh, community development corporations and the business carter managers that we support and that are part of the Commerce Department to reach out to these businesses, help them with security initiatives, help them with cleanup, um, help them making sure that they have all of their insurance at the levels that they need to be. You know, the retail industry continues to deal with unprecedented levels of crime, theft, and violence. The National and Retail Federation recently released this video addressing the kind of crime that swept through Philadelphia Tuesday night. As its yearly retail security survey indicates, this is a nationwide problem. 88% of our retailers reported that shoplifters overall are somewhat more or much more aggressive and violent compared to one year ago. Greater Philadelphia's Chamber of Commerce released a statement which reads in part, we must stand together and help prevent future events like these from impacting our community. We will continue to support and advocate for our business community to drive economic growth and prosperity for all residents of our region. The business owners that have worked hard to rebuild and, and reestablish themselves as business owners um, throughout so many communities, they don't deserve that. They're going to have to pay a price. This is not shoplifting. This is, this is looting. This is riot. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that. Okay, this is exactly what's wrong with the system, guys. Stories like this is exactly what is wrong with the current criminal justice system and how we handle these criminals, right? They can record themselves committing these acts of violence, committing these burglaries, committing these crimes, okay? It's right there. But yet they're going to get a slap on the wrist like this woman did, got released basically instantly overnight after getting a bail set to $25,000, which... She posted, now she's out, now she's going to start raising money from her followers, okay, and she's going to be able to get a very good lawyer, and essentially, she's going to get off, right? She's going to end up getting off, okay? Nothing's going to end up happening to her. That's what's happening. And then people wonder why we keep seeing this. Why do you keep seeing this stuff? Because there's no consequences. We aren't locking these people up and throwing away the key. This, this woman, she might actually get rewarded. All the press attention, all of the media attention that she's getting, uh, that's probably going to be great for her business, her online business, her clout business, right? She's going to be rewarded. At the end of the day, she's going to come out on top. And it has to be incredibly frustrating for these police officers. They're out here working hard, working their asses off to arrest criminals just for criminals to be released the next day. And then people wonder why people don't want to be police. Folks don't want to be police anymore. It's terrible. I mean, it's so bad that even CNN, CNN is even acknowledging that this is a problem, specifically in Democrat-run liberal city. In California, if it's under $1,000 worth of goods taken, it's a misdemeanor. And so there are some who argue that by having that law in place, that just doesn't put a stop to this. Is that the case in all these cities? Is that part of this? I, mean, I think it is. And, you know, the litmus test there is where is this happening? And you're seeing this kind of, uh, you know, looting happening. I mean, uh, shoplifting and organized retail theft happen in uh, places like New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia. Um, if you look at where Target closed nine stores yesterday, four stores in San Francisco, stores in Seattle, stores in Portland, stores in New York. Um, these are places where bail reform laws, criminal justice reforms have taken the inside of a jail cell out of the equation. So shoplifting is a crime where a judge can't set bail. Think about this. In New York City, there are just over 300 people who have between them 4,000 arrests. 70% of them are not in jail. 
and they account for 30 percent of all shoplifting in New York. This is actually their job. They go out to steal every day, and that has gone up significantly because they know getting put in jail is not in the equation any longer because of the laws that say it's a no-bail offense, and DA's policies are they don't want people in custody for what they call nonviolent crimes. Yeah, and again, that's why I'm so frustrated with this story, right? That is why I'm so extremely frustrated with the fact that this woman got off on a $25,000 bail, right? I really don't like that because, again, what you're doing is that you're showing these agents of chaos that, hey, um, if I do this, even if I record myself doing it, okay, I can go and hit multiple stores, right? I can record myself doing it, and I still will get a slap on the wrist. I'll still get off, right? Now, again, this influencer is going to go raise a ton of money off of it. She's going to get a great lawyer. And I don't really think she's going to see any real punishment, right? She might not even go to prison. She might not. Who knows? But again, until you get tough on crime, you're going to continue to see this happen. Because we have incentivized it to happen. We've told criminals that it's totally fine to commit these acts of violence or to loot steal rob these businesses and also what's going to happen is that these businesses are going to continue to leave these liberal cities it's going to continue to get worse and worse and worse and then these people are going to boohoo why and cry racism it's the white man's fault again when what you see here clearly is that this ain't really got nothing to do with the white man as much as it has to do with the liberal man right the democrat man and it just so happens that a lot of people that are committing these acts happen to be black and again, we're never going to actually really solve the problem because, again, these people don't believe in holding black folks accountable, right? It's racist to throw these people up in, in jail and to lock them up and to throw away the key and to punish them for their crimes. And again, as long as this is the uh, main ideology in these, these cities, okay, if this is what these people adhere to, then, again, you're never going to see it stop. Right? It, these cities are only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Okay? So, again, extremely frustrating situation. Um, again, I, I'm i not surprised, though. Right? Not a surprise she was released the next day. Uh, this is par for the course when it comes to what happens in these liberal cities. And, again, these people wonder why all the crime continues to happen. Why these cities are shitholes. So, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.